Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chevanaruktumam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tito Jayo Dire Nesta Pariyasho Bhadve Su Nityam Bhagavata Seva Bhagavati Tamashoki Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki Nigama Kapaturu Garitam Param Shukamakaram Itadravi Samitam Pibata Bhagavatam Rashamari Omahora Hora Sikabhubhivgaham Vishnu Swadhamu Bhagate Dhamagene Hesha Karuna Stadi Shamasho Padana Kodhuna Uditam Tama Piyada Vishuti Vishudam Vibhu Sama Piyada Yana Biram Parikshadam Parikyahi Duhar Maradam Sankhlesha Nirvana Musandi Nanyataham Atma Rama Ishtamani Anna Grantika Korvandiya Pritika Ita Bhutikana Anaita Pashamam Shakshat Bhakti Yoga Nagishira Charo Chakve Satpada Samitam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bhandu Jikapate Gopiya Shagopika Kanta Radha Kanta Ramo Shtute Jayato Shurito Pango Mama Minera Matera Giti Matsavisha Param Bojo Radha Ramadan Mohan, Sriman Rasa Rasa Rambi Bamsi Pana, Karsan Pena Shunrupi, Gopanatha Sri Asanam, Divyad Vrindana Nikavadru Mada, Sriman Radha Nikara Shima Sanishto, Sri Sri Radha Shida Govinda Prista Dabihi Seva Manush Marami, Namo Brahmanya Damaya Govramani Taya Chaji Gadi Taya Krishnaya Govinaya Namo Namo Namo, Mangalam Bhagavan Vishnu Mangalam Guru Radha Jau Mangalam Padari Kakshu Mangalaya Tuno Hari, Om Narayanaya Vibhahi Vasudevaya Dimahi Tano Vishnu Pachodiyate Heng Om Mahadevi Chabidnahi Vishnu Padne Chadimahi Tano Lakshmi Pachodiyate Heng Maharakshmi Namastubhyam Namastubhyam Sare Sare Hari Priya Namastubhyam Namastubhyam Dharadide Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Rane Vindavane Share Vishavana Sute Devi Pranamani Hari Priya Lugam Karoti Kaya Namaragam Dana Satyabhuri Vanasana Deepa Jyoti Namoshtu Tehe Om Aganati Manandasya Gananganam Sarapya Tyaksurun Miritam Yana Tajmai Sri Gravedam Ha Sri Tetani Manobishtam Stavitam Yana Bhutale Swayam Rupa Karamayam Tarati Swapana Dikam Vanneham Sri Guru Siyata Parakamanam Sri Guru Vaishnavacham Sri Rupam Sagatatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Stam Sadevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Paran Sahagana Sarita Shri Vishikhan Vitam Sham Namam Vishnu Paraya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Shri Mari Bhakti Paran Tashami Tanam Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pachani Ne Nirvishesa Sanivari Paskata Desana Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Abedi Giradha Shri Vasari Go Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Suprabhatam Super Bhattam is the early morning ceremony that devotees perform to wake up the deities. Last time I was in Tirupati, I had a good friend, Hari Charan. He's been going to visit the Balati deity for every day for 27 years. And he's one of a number of brothers who own the main construction company there in the town of Tirupati. So he took me under his wing several times. We'd go up to the temple. And because he was recognized by all the priests, what would normally be a five or six hour wait took us about 15 minutes to get in and see the deities. And the last time I was there, I guess maybe, I don't know, maybe 2012, he said, next time you come back, we will go and we will, we will go up to the temple at 2.30 in the morning and we will sit in the deity room. We will, we will actually sit in the deity room while the priests do the super bottom, they sing all these prayers to wake up the deity. Just like the king in ancient times used to wake up by hearing the sounds of the bards and the sages singing his glories, reciting his pastimes. That's how he would awaken every single day. And so the king of kings, the great greatest lord of all, the heroic lord, is also awakened every morning at 2.30 in the morning in the most popular Krishna temple in the entire world by the singing of those songs, Suprabhata. So Hari Chaud promised that next time I come to India, he would take me up there. Well, that was 2012. That was 10 years ago. And I haven't made it back because of, because of you guys. We're kept so busy here in Spanish Fork. We can't even... Get away. Sometimes I tell people, it's like we're running a motel. The motel owners know what I'm referring to is that there's a husband and a wife and they can hardly ever get away because 
People are coming 24 hours a day to check in. The desk has to be manned. The uh, housekeepers have to be supervised. Uh, you have to be on top of everything when you're receiving guests and visitors. So that's what we do here. We receive guests and visitors seven days a week from 10 in the morning till 8 at night. And when you're in businesses to receive guests and visitors, you, you leave at your own risk because you don't know what's going on when you're away. You know what you can do, what you're in charge of, what you can make sure happens while you're here. But when you're away, you don't necessarily know what happens. So um, we haven't uh, let loose enough of the project to be able to just go away, leave it to its own devices. We had a devotee uh, from Australia, I forget his name, he's quite high up, he runs a number of restaurants. Remember the younger generation, probably the third generation, he visited us. He wanted to see what our secrets were, and came all the way from Australia, stayed with us for a week or so. And uh, his parting statement was, you have an amazing project here, but you need middle management. <laughs> you need middle management. So anyway, I have yet to return to Tirupati to see my good friend Ari Charan and to experience being alone in the deity room at 2.30 in the morning with Balaji. Last time we were there, it was on Makara Sankranti, 14th of January, which is coming up pretty soon. That's when the sun goes from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere. It's the time when Bhisma left his body. And because it's an auspicious day, even more than the normal number of tourists visit Tirupati, instead of the normal daily 50,000, you have up to 200,000 or a quarter of a million people visit Tirupati. But fortunately, I had my friend, Hari Chan, who is the keys to the kingdom of night speed. Okay? And on that day, people were waiting for eight to 10 hours to get even a few seconds before the deity. As I mentioned before, the temple hires pushers because there are so many people waiting and the wait is so long that you, and no sooner do you get in front of the magnificent Krishna deity, fold your hands, and you're pushed, pushed on to make room for people behind you. So you only get a couple seconds. But because I was with Hari Charan, the priest saw me, and I was probably one of the only white guys to appear before the deity in that whole day. They saw me and they pulled me into the deity room. And I'm standing here, it's like four feet away from Balaji. And I, I wanted I wanted some indication of how long I was going to be allowed to stand there. So I started chanting in my mind, the Purusha Shukta, Om Sasusir Shala Purusha Sasaksa Sasapadeus, Hamamam Vishadu Vichad Tadishadiram. It's 17 verses, and I got through 12 or 13 of them. And I later on enchanted up to the point at which they finally pulled me out of the deity room. And it was, it doesn't sound like much, I grant you, it doesn't sound like much, but if you've ever been to Tirupati, this is practically an eternity. Such good fortune, such blessings, that whereas most people only get one or two seconds, ladies and gentlemen, Charudas, from Spanish for Utah, thanks to his friend Hari Charan, was in a deity room for one minute and 17 seconds, which is, it's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. But, when I go back, if I go back, I will be able to sit in the deity room while the deity is being woken up with the super bottom prayers. In any case, that was my stream of consciousness to you this morning. From Instead of saying, good morning, Rakesh, good morning, Anjali, good morning, Sundari Priya, I decided today, super bottom, and uh, stream on with all the associations that those two words have for me by Bobby G. Govinda Dave, Brent, Divya Josie, good morning to each and every one of you as we're coming up. Today is the 11th, so Maha Sankranti, Wednesday will be the 12th, Thursday will be the, so Friday, Friday will be Makara Sankranti, the time when the 
sun transfers from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere. The days will start getting uh, longer once again as soon as that transition is made. And by the way, if you've been to our Facebook page, and I know Govinda Dave has, and I know Rakesh has, and I think Anjali has also, um, sort of had a belated, because I took Vaibhavi away. I, I told Vaibhavi, I said, you can do anything you want on your birthday, which was on the 7th of January. So typical of Vaibhavi, she's like so much into her service. What we did on her birthday was, last year we went to the Butterfly Biosphere at Thanksgiving Point. We went to the aquarium. This year she wanted to go because every Saturday morning volunteers come and they take the llamas out for a hike. They put packs on their back and they train them up for being rented out um, during warmer weather for hikes in the high Uintas and the Washets Mountains. So um, they haven't been able to go very far because they don't know many trails. So she wanted me to drive her around the local area and find trails within five or ten mile span where the volunteers could take the llamas and take them out and go for a walk. So we drove up Elk Ridge. We, I showed her the Bonneville Shoreline Trail, the Canal Trail there. We went up to Woodland Hills. Once you get up high enough in Woodland Hills, the residential streets have almost no vehicular traffic. The, there are big lots, and so lots of grass along the side of the road. So that's what Bye Bye did for her birthday. But we weren't in the temple. Raleigh and Indu very kindly uh, took over our duties for us so we could be absent that day. But Indu said that because she couldn't do a birthday party for Vi last Friday on the 7th, she did it yesterday. And she had balloons. She had a wonderful cake and uh, ice cream, eggless ice cream, and a uh, combination of avocado and um, um, tofu and quinoa salad. And then a wonderful other salad with spinach leaves and uh, sautéed uh, mangoes and carrots and oh, it's just it was just uh, my heart was so touched by uh, Indu's thoughtfulness, uh, and she went to a great deal of trouble to put that together. So it was a very wonderful, memorable moment. And if you haven't been to our Facebook page, CC Radicus and Temple Spanish Fort, or Cheru Utah, or Cheru Das, go there and look at the. Nice picture with the wonderful layout yesterday. In any case, thanks for joining us. If I didn't have the forum, which rep which is represented by you guys, I wouldn't have the opportunity to um, discourse on the absolute truth as presented by the great sage Srila Vyasadeva in the Srimad Bhagavatam. We're going today for the first time to the 40th verse in the fifth chapter, first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is a verse that I chant every morning, in fact, as part of the invocation. Beautiful verse. In fact, it's so beautiful, I'm just going to say it. Fireworks just go off in your head with some of these verses. Please, therefore, describe the Almighty Lord's activities which you have learned by your vast knowledge of the Vedas, for that will satisfy the hankerings of great learned men and at the same time mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people who are always suffering from material pangs. Indeed, there is no other way to get out of such miseries. Now, Narada Muni himself was not a scholar. He was not a big brain, PhD, MA. He was a illegitimate son, son of a maidservant. He didn't even know who his father was. And his mother died when he was only five years old. So he was left alone, abandoned, uh, without any parentage, without any natural protectors. And yet, after his mother had passed away and the rainy season end, and the sages who had been sojourning for four months in this particular ashram then themselves moved moved on and moved away. Narada Muni himself, as a five-year-old orphan boy, decided to travel the world. Now, he picked up the practice of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, from the great saints and sages. Well, that was his practice. He, 
incessantly chanted the holy names of the Lord as he wandered along. There was a little five-year-old boy out in the world. I mean, honestly, what chance does a five-year-old boy have like in New York City or Calcutta or in the jungles of Burma or Thailand, Malaysia, India? And yet, because he was chanting the names of the Lord, just like Prahlad, also as a five-year-old boy, was chanting the names of the Lord, the Lord afforded his protection to those who take complete shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord surrounds him with the shield of protection. He's their tower. He's their bulwark. He's their armor, kavacha, so to speak. So, although he had no resources himself, the five-year-old boy was able to wander throughout the world. There's a huge industry of survivalism. I'm sure you're all aware of it. I'm sure you get advertisements on Instagram and Facebook for food storage supplies, for flashlight batteries, for generators when the power goes out. There's a whole culture and literally tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars spent on backup plans for when the lights go out or when there's no water or when the food supply is disrupted. And guns, that's another big part of it is having your own arsenal to keep other people, keep from sharing your food with other people. <laughs> and yet, here's a five-year-old boy who didn't have to do any of that. He didn't have a, a penny in the bank. He didn't have a gun. <laughs> he didn't have uh, <laughs> freeze-dried backpack on his back with meals that last for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because we, we we create so much trouble for ourselves. First, we have a godless society. We're in harsh competition with each other individually and collectively as nations, as families, as states, as countries. And we create all this unnecessarily huge arrangement for our own comfort and living high on the hog, literally and figuratively. And it brings with it so many complications, so many anxieties, so much stress. We have one problem, we try to counteract it with something else, and that 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 solution is worse than the original problem, and we have to counteract that and counteract that. It says Day Agyo Dito Vagano Nation Kamit, fifth canto. Day Agyo Dito and Nation Kamit Koshi Kare Vadmana Kamacha and said like it's like the worm. He spins out these filaments from his abdomen. And then the, the filaments, the, the strands, the threads, end up wrapping themselves around him, and he becomes bound hand and foot. So by our effort, by our organization of trying to provide more and more comfort and more affluence so we can have more and more trinkets and bells and whistles, we create for ourselves an extremely precarious, huge infrastructure which is very delicately poised and could come crashing down at any time. And then we have to go, we have to spend our hard earned money for plan B, for a bunker in case of nuclear war, for one year of food storage, for guns to protect all of that, uh, batteries and power and water purifiers, all these things for what we know is going to happen eventually when the godless society comes crashing down. And yet here's a five year old boy. None of that. Doesn't have a credit card. Doesn't have any plastic. Don't leave home without it. Well, he, he left home without He didn't even have a home to leave. And he didn't have a, what was it, an American Express card. He didn't have a driver's license. Didn't have a car. Didn't have a motor scooter. Didn't have a skateboard. Didn't have an electric bike. Didn't have a passport. Didn't have a, going all over the world without any visas. He had nothing. But the holy name of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And he was able to travel without being harassed, without being threatened, without being injured all over the world at that time. Simply because... Although he had none of those other amenities, he had the protection of the Almighty Father, Supreme Personality of Godhead. Makchita Sarvadhu Tatpashadam 
One who takes shelter of me, Machita, Machita, one who is always thinking of me, and what better way to think of the Lord than to have his names falling off the tip of your tongue? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram. You have different senses, speaking, hearing, seeing, touching, smelling, but by the simple expediency of chanting the holy name of the Lord, your speaking is engaged, your hearing is engaged, your mind, which is considered to be the sixth sense, is engaged. You can smell the incense that's offered to the Lord, the flowers. You can look at a picture of the Lord, and all of your senses are locked in. Yato, yato, nishadini, manishtanchana, chashtachodhi, amya, admi, amya, The senses are so fragile and easily influenced that any one of the senses, you smell something, you hear some music, or you see a beautiful form, Immediately your mind is dragged here and there, just like a boat without any anchor. But when you're engaging your senses, chanting the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, your mind, it's not to say that it doesn't wander, but the, but the practice, the engagement of the senses, uh, through mantra meditation, audibly saying the name of the Lord, brings the mind back. Yato, yato, nichality, anjalish manichach. It comes back. It wanders, it comes back, it wanders, it comes back. And then eventually, Finally, the mind ceases to wander by constant practice and determination. The mind stops wandering. And one enters into a deep trance called samadhi. And one's consciousness in that state is compared to a lamp in a windless place. The mind no longer deviates from the lotus feet of the Lord. Narada Muni took shelter of the Lord, associated with the Lord by chanting his holy names. His mind was totally focused and absorbed in the Lord. And the Lord, for his part, is absorbed in his devotees. For those who surrender to the Lord, the Lord surrenders to the devotees. For those who Seek the protection of the Lord. The Lord never denies that. He never refuses the protection of those who throw themselves at his lotus feet. That's why a five-year-old boy, Dhruva Maharaj, was able to wander unscathed all over the world. That's why, in spite of his father attempting to murder him in multiple different ways, Prahlad Maharaj was untouched, unscathed. Not only did Prahlad Maharaj not get killed, but his father ended up getting killed. <laughs> so this verse says that the practice of chanting Hare Krishna is for everybody. Narada Muni wasn't a big scholar. He wasn't a big yogi. He had no qualification. He had no assets that we can identify. Except he had faith. He took shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. So anybody who's willing to take shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord doesn't matter what qualifications they have or talents or abilities they have or they don't have. Krishna says, Ananya yoga sema bahamiha. He preserves whatever it is he's originally embedded in with in you. He preserves that. And then he carries what you lack. So no other asset is required than faith that the Lord is always in it on his throne. He's always got me in the palm of his hands. And even what is meant for my harm, the Lord knows how to turn that to my advantage. So therefore, for every class of men, the good and the bad, it's recommended that anybody who's willing to associate with the Lord by taking prasadam, consecrated food, offering him, chanting his holy names, they will be, Prabhupada says this, corrigible up to the standard of perfection. We hardly ever hear this word corrigible. When I first read it, 50 years ago, in the second camp of the Srimad Bhagavatam, I thought, I've never, never actually read that word. I, we, we've re heard incorrigible, because that's this is Kali Yuga. So incorrigible is the applicable word, right? The whole population is pretty much incorrigible, like Jagaya Madai, drunkards, woman chasers, senses out of control. We're all incorrigible. So we've all seen and heard the word incorrigible, but where have we heard the word without the in in front of it? Corrig incorrigible means it cannot be helped. They will not allow themselves to be helped. Corrigible means 
you can be helped up to the standard perfection if your heart is open. So anybody, doesn't matter, don't have to have had any qualifications. Even your history may be a history of bad decisions, like Jagaya Madai. Still, if you're willing to let the, the, the powerful sunbeam light of chanting Hare Krishna into the courtyard of your heart, it will banish all the darkness, all the ignorance. Kechid Kebala Bhakta, Vasudeva Agamudhi, Miharamiva Bhashka, just like the rising sun, even the pre sun, even before the sun itself appears over the horizon, even the pre-dawn hours have the effect of lightening things up. And those things of which you were rightly afraid during the middle of the night, during the midnight hour, snakes, thieves wandering about, and ghosts and all, even with the pre-dawn uh, light, just the, the slightly lightening of the sky, when all those fears and all those anxieties go away. So it is said, There are all kinds of anxieties, stresses, and fears that come to us in the darkness of midnight. But as soon as we begin to chant the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, and all that stress, all that anxiety, all that unnecessary fear starts to dissipate just like the rising sun or even the pre-dawn hours dissipate. The darkness and fears uh, in the middle of the night. So it's explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Namam Mana Prapajite Maya Ashram There are four types of bad men. Namam Duskritino. There are those who otherwise have merit, have intelligence, but they're misused. They misuse their merit and their intelligence to promote themselves, to push themselves up by stepping on the head of others to take more than what is set aside as their quota out of greed. In other words, they use their God-given talents in order to promote themselves instead of in order to go to God. And then there are those uh, those who are just low-class men addicted to intoxication, meat-eating, illicit sex and gift. Those who are otherwise intelligent, but whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. They cannot see the forest for the trees. They're so engaged in studying the minutia of God's creation that they fail to see the Almighty Lord as the Vyaktam Vyaktam Atmana, in his invisible form, pervading and supporting behind everything. And then finally, Asurumbha Mashita, those who are of the outright nature of demons. So that... Um, those who are meritorious but who have misused their merit, um, those who are just addicted to all kinds of bad habits, those who have God-given intelligence but whose intelligence is used, misused to decry God, and those who are in the outright nature of demons. And that means to say, who's a demon? It's a guy with little horns and a pitchfork and a tail. Basically, a demon is someone who enjoys the suffering of others. A demon, and I think you'll agree with me, this is not so far out, this is not so outrageous as it first sounds. You know, when you talk about demons, you're thinking immediately the reaction is, demons? Come on, get with it. We don't talk about demons in this day and age. Kirtananda, once in the early days, said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I'm not so sure about this talk of demons. Prabhupada said, if you do not acknowledge there are demons, you'll never become Krishna conscious. What is a demon, or at least what is demoniac mentality? Demoniac mentality is to take pleasure in others' suffering. That is the demoniac mentality. But even such a person, by association with devotees of the Lord and chanting holy name, can be rectified up to the standard, corrigible up to the standard protection. A few days ago, last week, we talked extensively about Magrari the hunter. Magrari the hunter was a sadist. He enjoyed inflicting pain and torturing the innocent animals with his bow and arrow. However, when he met Narada Muni and he um, benefited from the association of Narada Muni, and especially when he said to Narada Muni, whatever you say, I will do. Whatever you say, I will do. 
when he opened up, when there was that little sliver of an opening in his heart, and Narada Muni penetrated the heart. Narada Muni told him, chant the holy name of the Lord. Break your bow and throw it in the river. Extend and stretch your faith in favor of the Lord. If you seek the protection of the Lord, the Lord will not deny you. Just like Dhruva had no assets uh, to start with. He started life with nothing. Well, Magrari had something, and it was his bow and arrow, and he'd been taught to use it by his father and his grandfather. It was his means of living, and yet Narada Muni said, you don't need it. Your bow and arrow is not your provider. We're saying to you, stock market is not your provider. Your boss is not your provider. Your company is not your provider. The economy is not your provider. Politicians are not your provider. Krishna or God is your provider. If you do nothing more than chant the holy names of the Lord, seek his protection in great faith and devotion, and you don't need guns, you don't need big, expensive $50,000 four-wheel, all-terrain drives. You don't need uh, a huge room with food storage. You don't need water purifier. Of course, it doesn't hurt to help have all that because we are in the Kali Yuga and things are going south. And if anybody should have a, a contingency plan, it's the devotees because preaching has to go on at all costs. But this is not where we look for our protection and for our safety. We look to Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare. So even though Magari was living a totally condemned life, his future was totally dark, pitch black, still, because he, some other came to that point, some other recognized his savior, the person of Narada Muni. He, he, said, he said, whatever you say, whatever you say, I'll do. And when Narada Muni told him to take that leap of faith, break his bow and throw it in the river, he went ahead and did it. Whatever reservations, hesitations, or scruples he had, he put them aside and he took that step of faith. And as a result, he became a great saint. We talk about him thousands of years later. We don't talk about him as a bloodthirsty sadist. We talk about him as a pure devotee of the Lord. After some time, Narada came back with his friend Parvat Muni to visit Magari, and Magari was loath to even step on an ant at that time. I forget whether it was Nard or Parvat Muni who marveled. Isn't it amazing that this formerly bloodthirsty, sadistic hunter who was condemned to hellish life for millions and millions of births simply on the strength of his becoming a devotee, all good qualities have manifested themselves in his body. He is of the highest level of saint. So this indicates that devotional service is all that we need. Faith in the Lord is all that we need. We don't have to be big scholars. We don't have to be yogis or ascetics or renunciants. Because when you become a devotee, knowledge and detachment come up by automatically. When you're under the protection of the Lord, the Lord blesses you and endows you with everything that you need. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga by the practice of bhakti yoga, there's no separate endeavor needed to acquire knowledge. There's no separate endeavor needed to become detached from the miseries of this material world. And Narada Muni is advising Vyasadeva to dedicate himself to broadcasting the knowledge of bhakti yoga as the culmination of all Vedic literatures. Narada is offering that advice to Vyasadeva and presenting himself as a witness, presenting himself as the best testimony of the efficacy of practicing bhakti yoga. Even the worst type of men like Jagaya Madai and Magrari, we see through scriptures, are corrigible up to the highest standard of perfection on the strength of bhakti yoga. It's not that you have to have any pre-qualifications. Anybody, even the worst type of people, can benefit. Akama, Sarva Kama, Moksha Kama, Tibere, Navakim, Yajitam, Purushapa. Those who are Akama, certainly, the liberated souls who have no material desires, you expect them to be chanting Hare Krishna, but then Sarva Kama, those who are full, riddled, <laughs> permeated by material desires, they're also recommended to chant because the chanting is so powerful, it will 
destroy those desires just like the rising sun destroys the fog. Akarama sarva karma moksha karma than those who are selfishly. They're not concerned with the well-being of people in general, but they only want their own liberation, moksha karma. They are also recommended to chant because their hearts will melt in compassion once they taste the nectar of chanting Hare Krishna, they won't want to keep it to themselves. Just like honey. Nature of honey is that when you spill it, it spreads. So nobody who's diligently and attentively chanting Hare Krishna, thereby feeling the nectar of the holy names, is ever going to be uh, insensitive uh, to the suffering of others. Devotees, universally, and without any exception, the more they become enlightened, the more they taste the nectar of the names of the Lord, the more they try to help out others. So the more I taste the nectar, chanting the holy names of the Lord, the more I submerge in the ocean of devotion, Prahlad Mahar says, the more compassion I feel for those who are pursuing false happiness and suffering repeated birth and death in this material world. So chanting and devotional service benefits the bad men, and it also benefits the good men, of which there are, again, four types, just as there are four types of bad men, there are four types of good men, and they, are, they have an affinity for devotional service. Prabhupada gave the example. If you throw a spark on wet grass, it will generally extinguish. There is a chance that it may catch but pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time, it will extinguish. If you throw a spark on moist grass, it's moist, it may extinguish, it may catch. If you throw the spark on dry grass, it will always ignite, it will create a grass fire. And so these four type of men, they're either moist or dry. <laughs> the four type of bad men are either moist or wet. But these four types of men are either moist or dry. And those are Arto Jignish, Chatur Vidam Bajate, Majanashukad Arto Jignishi, Arto Janisha Bajate, Chatur Vidam Bajate. There are four types of men who worship me. Arto, those who need money. They're down and out. And they recognize that the Lord is Aishurya. He's the most wealthy. From him comes all opiums. So they worship the Lord. They put a dollar in the co co uh, collection plate, hoping to get $100 back. And they're uh, hopes are not fruitless. Generally, the Lord, if you want material things, the Lord will give you material things. If you're unfortunate enough to approach the Lord as a businessman, offering to trade what you have for something in return from the Lord, then he'll certainly give you that. But you'll deny yourself devotional service. However, in the process of worshiping the Lord for material things, many, 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 many persons have become purified. And so by all means, even if you want money, Go ahead and go to the Lord and not elsewhere for that money. So, Chaturvirabhajanam jana sukriti arjuna. Then there are those people who are basically pious, um, but they want things from the Lord. They want to pray to the Lord. They come to the temple, the church, the mosque center with their shopping list, and they basically prostitute themselves before the Lord in order to get material things. And then there are those who are distressed. They're just having a hard, rough time. And they look to the Lord for the rectification, for the vindication, for the restoration. Dhruva Maharaj was in this category. And then there are those who are inquisitive. Gani Chabari or Shabbat. Uh, there are those who are um, open. They have inquisitive, inquiring minds. They see the devotees chanting on the street and they Get a Back to Godhead magazine, attend a festival, a Rathyatra festival, a color festival. And that's moist grass that ignites their passion for understanding the absolute truth. We all want knowledge. We all want to know what is what. But we're not necessarily equipped intellectually, nor do we have the time to comb through all the scriptures from various cultures, various times and places and cultures to come up with the set on the essence. And so you know, when we're presented with the opportunity to chant the holy names of the Lord and associate with people who are further along than we are, the inquisitive person is likely to take, take, us, take us up on that 
And then finally, Gyanachabara are those who are in knowledge. And these are the ones who are like dry grass. They're every once in a while. It's not often. But you just see someone just take to devotional service like a fish to water. I've told this story previous times. Most of you who are devotees know Madhavananda. He's based in Arissa, disciple of Gaur Govinda Maharaj. Uh, an, an amazing scholar. I mean, steeped in Vaishnavism. And he talks about, he quotes books, he quotes from books, the books I've never heard of, what to speak of the quote. And such a humble, sincere, sweet soul. Well, I can take credit for his, for having uh, hooked him up to devotional service, probably in 1981. We were doing a festival of India throughout the Southwest, and we happened to be at the University of Arizona. Not let's see, yeah, University of Arizona in Tucson. We we're there for a Tuesday and Wednesday. We set up with a Prashadam booth. We had exhibits, and we had a little boutique where we sold torches and yoga pants and all. And when we first arrived there, this young man, he wasn't a student, but he was on campus. Um, yeah, I think he was living out in the mountains somewhere in a cave, living a highly renounced life. And he, he spent time with us. He took prasadam. He asked questions. He took some books. And when it came time, uh, the festival was over, and it was time to take everything down and pack it in the truck. We got in the trucks, and he was standing there. And Madhua, Madhua is, Madhua is just, I mean, I'll never forget. As long as I live, Madhua said, look down. Madhua had, was in one of these 24, we had two rider trucks. And Madhua's up there. And, uh, and he says to uh I forget what his name was, Madhavananda, I forget what his name was. He says, are you coming? Are you coming? I think he read his mind. So he was standing there, and he'd obviously gotten so much inspiration and direction from associating with the devotees for two days, reading the exhibits, asking and getting his questions answered. Uh, he, was, he was standing there, but you could almost hear his mind, the wheels turning. Should I go? Shouldn't I go? Should I go? Shouldn't I go? And Madhua tipped the scales in favor of going by saying, get in. Aren't you coming? And he just got in the truck and he became a devotee. And now he's one of the greatest luminaries on the surface of the earth. This is someone who is more or less in knowledge, who realizes before having met devotees that there's no other purpose in life than Pursuing the absolute truth. Who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? And so when you come with devotees, it's like throwing a spark in dry grass. If you read the book, The Journey Home, same thing with Radha Swami. Before he met the devotees, he'd already made a decision. And I'm going to discover the answers, the, the answers to the meaning of life, or I'm going to die trying. That fixed determination is the prerequisite for success. Such a person will take to devotional service like a fish to water. So our time is about up for Tuesday, but let me let me quote this next verse, and we'll start at this point tomorrow. This is from the seventh chapter, the first canto, eighth verse. Anarto pashavam shakshad bhakti yoga rokshada logashira chirovim chakri sattvada samitam. Anarta. Anartas are things which are impediments on the path of devotional service. There are unwanted elements in our lives. Certainly illicit sex, smoking, intoxication are unwanted. But there are other things which take the form of profit, adoration, and distinction, which are subtle forms of sex, sex desire. We're going to talk about those unwanted, external, superfluous items, entities in our life, which can easily be removed by devotional service. They're not so easy to be removed by practice of mental speculation or yoga or austerities, but by the blissful, uh, natural, constitutional process of serving the Lord in the association of devotees, these unwanted things are easily removed. But the mass of people do not know this, and therefore, according to the promptings of his guru Vyasadeva, the great sage, literary incarnation of God, compiled the Vedic literature which is in relation to the absolute truth. The conclusion, the summation of the Vedic literature is that when you satisfy the Lord by your, by your 
mouth, by your ears, by your eyes, by your nose, and by your sense of touch. The Lord is going to give you everything you need to navigate the dangerous waters of this material world, and particularly the Kali Yuga, and bring you safely to the other side, back to home, back to Godhead, where life is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This has been Transcendental Tuesday, I believe January 11th, three days before Makara Sankranti. And we certainly always appreciate you guys dropping in, appreciate your comments, appreciate your dedicating your ears to listening, your intelligence to mulling over the truths which Narada Muni is passing down to his disciple Vyasadeva to which we become privy through the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam and the intervention of our eternal savior, divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Good morning. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, Divya Joshi, Fred Spencer, Govinda Dev, Bhai Bhavi. I'll see you today multiple times. <laughs> Gee. Rakesh, all the glories of Prabhupada. Anjali, we're going to talk on Thursday, right? This Thursday, we're going to have our talk. I won't call on Rod because Rob has Kale, Kale with him, and Kale's having a rough night. So Rob's a little indisposed. Thanks, Rob, for joining us also. Sundari Priya, Bhakti, Bhakti Gary, bless you. Manasa Ganga, Ram Kishore, and Thomas. Thank you all. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.